Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, informational travel preview webinar um, on two of our upcoming trips uh, with Orbridge, one of our longstanding travel partners. Um, the first is going to be the uh, Flavors of Northern Italy tour, and the second one is going to be an Africa um, an Africa by private train tour. Um, so why travel with World Affairs? So um, we have uh, expert guided tours on global uh, issues and cultures, personal interactions with community leaders, experts, and historians, educational resources provided to enhance your experience, and a global network of over 45 years of trusted travel partnerships. Um, I'm joined today by Fiorella Fernandez, who is our program's coordinator here at the travel department. And I'm also joined by uh, Vanessa Cheatham, who is the senior um, sales director for uh, Orbridge and is our long senior travel partner. Um, today we'll be reviewing the uh, itineraries, the uh, hotels, the train, of course, um, and uh, on these amazing tours. And then we'll show a short video on the importance of travel insurance and answer your questions there. Um, we'll, we'll pause after the flavors of Northern Italy tour um, to answer questions. And then we will um, go right into the Africa by private train tour. Um, and with that, I will pass it over to Vanessa. Thanks so much, Andrew. Um, so glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. These are always great fun. And you've chosen two amazing tours to uh, present to your members. One, the first, the Flavors of Northern Italy, is truly uh, one of its kind. It's a live like a local kind of experience. And it's a very small group of approximately 18 people. So with that small group, you will have many opportunities to meet and to learn from some of the local artisans and experts in and around the region of Northern Italy. Uh, we can go to the next slide. We'll, and it is indeed a delicious journey. I'll let you see some video that we've captured of the tour. Thank you, Thank you Vanessa. I think there may be uh, some issues with the audio, so I'll just narrate. Um, this is the property, Selva Capuza. I'll tell you a bit more about the property in a few minutes. This is Luca Fiormentini. He's the owner of the property and the vineyard on which it sits, and Luca will be our host for the week. It's truly a genuine Italian hospitality at its very, very best. And Luca, in this, uh, I, I hope you'll be able to see it uh, on the YouTube channel, but ultimately Luke is telling you a bit about the vineyards that he runs and the award-winning wine that he produces. And speaking of wine, uh, you will have opportunities to taste wine throughout this program at a variety of vineyards, including Selva Capuza. Uh, and also at Selva Capuza, what the gentleman there is, is presenting is all the olive oil that's also produced on site by Luca and his family. Uh, so we'll do an olive oil uh, tasting as well. And it is, uh, I think, probably the best I've ever had. It's definitely a treat. These are just some of the highlights of the tour. Again, we'll visit uh, the Valpocella region and we spend time with Giuseppe Lenardi and his family. His daughter now runs the vineyard, uh, but Giuseppe and his daughter, they introduce us to their winemaking process, which is completely different from Luca's given the geography and the types of grapes that he's producing. So very interesting, uh, different nuances. And, and of course, we'll do a tasting there. Um, at Giuseppe's uh, winery. We also do uh, some risotto making there with Giuseppe and his chef. And uh, that's a lot of fun. Here's, oh, great, per perfect timing. I just mentioned the, the Amarone infused risotto that we learn how to make um, in this massive, uh, quite, quite old um, 
uh, cast iron pot. It's a lot of fun. We all contribute and then we taste and we have a lovely dinner together, a communal dinner. The communal dinners will definitely be part of uh, the experience throughout the week. There's lots of opportunities for us to gather together over very leisurely and delicious meals, uh, both at the property where there is a restaurant and also uh, out on many of our uh, interesting excursions that we'll experience together. Also, as you would guess, hopefully by the flavors title, we do have a little cooking included. This is not a cooking tour by any stretch, but there are uh, cooking classes. We'll have two of them in particular. So you will learn some local recipes like this. We'll do some pasta making. And we also typically on tour do a dessert making class. So, uh, you know, we've done a variety of desserts. Most recently, whenever I was there, I did a tiramisu uh, and it's a lot of fun. We've also made some lemon desserts, lots of fun on tour, uh, cooking together as well. But again, not a cooking tour. We have plenty of culture, history, uh, as well as the food and wine components on tour. So you can, again, check that video out with the, uh, with the sound. I think you'll really enjoy it. As you saw, it was pretty short, a lot of fun uh, to watch. So we kick off our tour in the Cinque Terre region. You have the option of adding this as a pre-tour. It's a four day, three night pre-tour. And we're really just exploring the beautiful Cinque Terre area, the lively towns. Every stop will have a culinary specialty. Uh, in Monterosa, we have some freshly baked focaccia. And Manarola, we enjoy some uh, dessert white wine that's a specialty of the region. Another highlight on this is visiting the stunning uh, fishing village of Portofino on the Italian Riviera and taking a little, um, well, a little cruise in, in a traditional wooden boat to uh, an abbey that actually dates back to the 16th century. So as I mentioned, food, wine, culture, uh, and so on is all part of this tour. That's our pre-tour. And then we'll meet up with our main group on September 20th. Um, and begin our our main tour. You saw a little bit of the uh, accommodations at Borgo San Donino. That's Luca's property. And again, it's situated on the vineyard Selva Capuza. It is a 17th century restored farmhouse and it is uh, quite lovely. It's also very comfortable. So each of the rooms is large um, in terms of European size. So very large, we call them apartments. And, uh, you know, with some with lovely views, some with nice terraces that you can sit outside and enjoy. There is a swimming pool. Again, it is on Luca's uh, working vineyard and olive oil plantation as well. So each day we will stroll the grounds, we'll stroll through the vineyards and see many of uh, Luca's family and, and uh, employees working, picking, harvesting and so on and learning more about the production of the various wines that Luca makes there at Selva Capuza. It's a very special way to, you know, be fully immersed in this area in Northern Italy and really get to see a local live and work and, and see Luca's pride in uh, what he creates. It's a special component of the tour for sure. Uh, moving right along, we'll, um, I'll tell you just briefly about our main tour. Uh, we arrive into Verona, Italy, which is, you know, the area in and around where we'll spend most of our time. We transfer to the property. This is on day two because you'll be flying from the U.S. likely on day one. And then we settle into uh, our room. We have a lovely welcome dinner and a reception on the day on the evening of day two where we'll get to meet each other. On day three, we'll um, depart for uh, Solzano, which is a small, again, a small fishing village on the east shore of Lake Diaso, and, and we'll embark on a lovely picturesque boat tour. Uh, this is a, a really fun area where we'll, learn, where, we'll, where we'll learn a bit about the fishing culture, as well as some of the other areas that we'll visit where we'll learn about other, you know, um, food items that, that are produced in that area. We uh, will spend the afternoon at El Rocco, which is a vineyard that's um, managed by four share farmer families. So a very interesting arrangement, business arrangement. And we learn more about how they work together and produce wine together. We have a guided cellar tour and then a tasting and lunch. 
In the evening, we head back to Selva Capuza, where we enjoy uh, dinner at the local restaurant there. On day four, we're in Selva Capuza. We spend most of the day at the property uh, and enjoying the property, enjoying the pool, if you so choose. The weather for your tour should be great into September. It was very warm, and so people were still very much enjoying the pool in the area around the property. Uh, there's also uh, San Martino Tower, which is in walking distance of the property. And so that's always a nice exploration too of the local history of the region. On day five, we explore Verona, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And yes, we do visit uh, Juliet's famed balcony. Don't worry, you'll get the photo op for sure. Uh, and so we spend the day in Verona. We uh, do a panoramic tour. And then we um, there will be opportunities for guests really love the free time there. We'll do some um, museum visits. And, and then you'll have some time to explore the local market and do some shopping. And then we head to Giuseppe Leonardi's, who I mentioned. Uh, he's the producer of the Amarone in Italy, and we'll be making uh, the risotto that evening together. On day six, we head out to for some historic lessons of the area in and around the Lake Garda region. And then we head to the Tarzal estate, which is, um, which is absolutely a delight. This is always a, a favorite for our guests. It's a very charming vineyard. They make a significantly less wine than any of the other vineyards we visit, even though all of them are quite small. And so it's very special when you spend the, the afternoon really with the family learning about the work. Uh, also doing a cheese tasting there. They also produce cheese. So it's a lovely way to taste some of their products. Uh, and then we uh, head to Malchesne along the shores of Lake Garda on day six. We'll have some shopping and we'll be able to enjoy that time around the lake together. We head to Modena on day seven where we meet Simone. He produces award-winning balsamic vinegar. And so Simone has been producing vinegar in his family for centuries. His family has been producing it for centuries. And uh, it really is, uh, this is maybe the guest favorite excursion. Uh, you'll do a tasting with Simone. You'll be able to see his workshop, which is also his home. And then his family prepares lunch for us, uh, which is exquisite. On day eight, we are heading into um, a, a bit of farmland and we're also visiting a local family run cheese shop in the Ronca uh, region. We'll do a cheese tasting. We'll learn about the production of the cheese. And then, uh, and then we head out to do some touring of the local medieval town of Sauvé. Um, lots of history on uh, day eight. Finally, day nine, we say farewell to each other and we head home after we have the uh, transfer to the airport. We also will conclude, if you'd like to continue on, you can continue on on our Venice post tour. Of course, this is always a highlight. All of the programs include the transfers to and from the airport. I should mention that. And then, uh, of course, we'll transfer you to the post tour where you'll settle into a local uh, hotel, a lovely four star property right in Venice and walk it, able to walk and explore on your own quite a bit. We also have a guided city tour with a local historian and we have a, a great gondola ride and experience uh, at the Gondola Museum of sorts as well. There's a guided vineyard tour uh, of that region which offers a little bit of a different perspective on some of the wine in the Venice region of uh, Italy. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Are there any questions on the uh, flavors of Northern Italy before we move on to uh, the Africa by private train? All right. Well, I should have eaten lunch before um, doing this because now I'm really hungry. <laughs> it's delicious food. You definitely will have lots of opportunities to try uh, many, many specialties on Northern Italy. Yeah. And you then come home hungry. <laughs> yeah, and then if you want to register for this event, I will pass over to Fiorella to talk to you. So. Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much, Andrew. And thank you, Vanessa. Um, so my, again, my name is Fiorella. I'm the programs coordinator here at the World Affairs Council of Philadelphia. I will be your main point of contact for registering for these trips, or if you have any questions or concerns, or just want to know a little bit more about 
our itineraries, our accommodations, any of the things. So feel free to reach out to me by either calling or texting me at the number on the screen, 267-802-1252, or feel free to email me at travel at wacfilla.org. In addition, you can visit our tour-specific webpage that is on the link that you see below, so wacfilla.org slash tour slash flavors of Northern Italy, and there you'll be able to find the brochure, you'll be able to find additional information, and also you'll be able to find the reser reservation request form on Orbridge's fabulous co-branded website that they've created for us. Um, and there you'll be able to, you know, put in your res registration or requests, excuse me, and then they will follow up about next steps. But we are here for any of your questions. If you'd like a physical brochure, we're happy to send it to you. Just let me know. And wonderful. So moving on, Vanessa, why don't you tell us a little bit more about Africa by Private Train? Sure. This is a very popular program for us. It's uh, a bit larger than Northern Italy, but boy, oh boy, is it selling quickly. Uh, it is the African Expedition by Luxury Train. And on this tour, we're exploring four African countries, including Zimbabwe, Eswatini, Mozambique, and South Africa. And the journey includes both the notable cities and UNESCO World Heritage Sites, cultural excursions, and legendary national parks. This has a little bit of something for everyone. Uh, so it functions much like a river cruise in that we're going to travel by train at night to our next destination. We'll wake up for breakfast on board the train and then we'll depart for our excursions throughout the day before returning to the train to freshen up for dinner and then have dinner on board. And I'll tell you a bit about the itinerary now we begin this tour with a Cape Town pre-tour, if you'd like. It's a four-day, three-night pre-tour uh, of Cape Town, which is at the southernmost tip of Africa. And it's separated from the rest of the continent by um, a beautiful ring of mountains. So on this tour, we uh, have created, I think, an itinerary that hopefully will allow you to experience the natural beauty of Cape Town, as well as the cultural and outdoor highlights that it offers. So uh, some highlights include a cable car ride ascending Table Mountain, uh, a panoramic tour of the city passing by some of the most iconic landmarks stopping and at each so that you can get some insight into the historical significance, uh, a visit to the company, sorry, Company Garden and Green Market Square. This was originally established in the 1600s to sell fresh produce and it's grown and evolved and guests really love stopping and shopping at this site. We also will do a food heritage tour uh, in the Bocap neighborhood featuring Cape Dutch, French, Indian, and Japanese cuisine. So that's a fun highlight too during our pre-tour. And of course, um, in the, the tip of the Cape Peninsula is the Cape of Good Hope, where the Atlantic and the Indian Oceans converge. And that's a big highlight. Also an opportunity to see the uh, colony of African penguins in their natural habitat, which is also a beloved guest moment on the Cape Town pre-tour. And so um, starting off on day... On day one, you're, you're departing your home for uh, Africa, and we'll meet you on day two in, in Joburg, South Africa. We'll transfer you to the hotel and let you settle in and unwind, and you'll have the evening at leisure to really acclimate to a beautiful property there uh, and then settle in and, and get ready for a first day, a very full day of touring in Pretoria. Uh, after breakfast, we'll set out on a guided panoramic tour to see some iconic thanks, iconic landmarks, including the Union Building, Nelson Mandela statue, and then we'll embark the train in the late afternoon of day three and settle into our compartments. On day four, we spend a travel day on board the train. And I should tell you a bit about the train. It is a, an absolutely lovely way to travel. Uh, you will experience, you know, luxury at its finest, um, incredible service. There will be lectures, uh, opportunities for you to read and relax and enjoy uh, custom-made beverages in the bar car. 
we'll have four course dinners of African and European cuisine in two different restaurants car on two different restaurant cars on board. Um, there's an observation platform that you can see there as well. And then our sleeping compartments, wow, cozy. They are very, very comfortable. And again, the service is really second to none on board the train. Thanks so much for letting me mention that. Uh, and then we're on to day five, whenever we explore the kingdom of Eswatini, formerly Swaziland. And uh, upon arrival into Eswatini, uh, we visit the Valley of Heaven, which is Eswatini's main tourist destination. We'll also visit a glass factory, which is situated on gorgeous gardens. So opportunities to visit those gardens for a glass blowing demonstration. You then can meet with the artists and visit their booths and the showroom there. Uh, and then we continue on for a Swazi dance performance. Finally, in Eswatini, we explore Pig's Peak, which is a town originally founded for its gold mining. Uh, prior to, uh, that's a quite, quite a full day of excursions, prior to heading back to our train for dinner on board and settling in for a good night of sleep after covering a lot of ground. Uh, on day six, we'll disembark for a city tour of Maputo, the uh, lush capital of Mozambique. It's a combination of African and Latin flavors there, and it was developed around a Portuguese fortress in 1787. So a lot of really interesting history there. We'll visit some notable sites, including the Square of Independence and the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. Uh, and then we'll have a delicious seafood lunch uh, along the waterfront before we return to the train for dinner on board. On day seven, this is always an exhilarating day. Uh, we visit the Kruger. So um, it's five million acre reserve with some of the best wildlife sighting in all of Africa. So we are uh, departing for a full day game drive and we'll be watching for the big five. So you can see them, see them there. And uh, there will be other animals, of course, crocodiles, hippos, giraffes, zebra, in addition, to those big five that we'll be trying to spot together. We'll have a picnic style lunch within the park before we depart on a second game drive in the afternoon. This night, we're not on board the train and instead we stay at Kruger Gate Hotel, which is on the banks of the iconic Sabi River. So absolutely terrific views of Kruger from uh, the property, which is, um, which is actually the closest property to Kruger. So you couldn't get any closer and, and that really makes for a, a nice and easy way to transfer into and out of the park. On day uh, eight, we're in Drakensburg Mountains. We'll take a, another safari through Kruger in the morning of day eight. Sometimes, you know, whenever we depart early or, or have a little later day game drive, we might see different species, uh, different, you know, animals. And so that's always our goal on these is to expose you to as much wildlife as we could possibly see on these safari drives. And so we'll take another drive on day eight before traveling by bus through the mountain range, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And these mountains rise to over 11,000 feet. Uh, on board. So, you know, quite, quite uh, a bit of elevation there. We return to the train on board and, and uh, enjoy dinner together on day eight. Again, we're settling into the train. Day nine, um, we're in Maklali uh, Game Reserve. And so this is a very diverse landscape than in Kruger. And this game river reserve is known for its anti-poaching initiatives and conservation programs. So we will learn about many of their efforts to protect the endangered species and to preserve the ecosystem there. Uh, and also, of course, we're gonna have a game drive there as well. The afternoon and evening of day nine are also on board the train as well. Day 10, we're continuing through um, the South, the South Pansburg mountain range and we head to into the lands of South Africa. We're heading towards Great Zimbabwe. So on board on day 10, we'll again have lectures, some leisure time, we'll do some tastings of some South African snacks as well as some South African wine. So there will be lots of opportunity, you know, on these days on board to have tastings, to have lectures and to really enjoy time with each other and learning from our experts that, that are gonna be leading us. 
on day 11, uh, following breakfast, we journey to the ruins of Great Zimbabwe, the UNESCO World Heritage Site. And uh, we work together to unravel the mysteries of this ancient, to unravel the mysteries of this ancient civilization. Um, it of course lives on as one of the largest and most important archeological sites of its kind in Africa. And so we spend the full day on day 11 um, exploring this site together. Uh, on day 12, we will visit um, a small village and uh, do a panoramic city tour, uh, as well as have the opportunity to visit a natural history museum and a railway museum in Bulewo. Uh, lovely colonial architecture there that we can enjoy. There's some shopping opportunities. It's a really, it's a lovely uh, town there. After lunch, we visit Matobo National Park. Again, another UNESCO World Heritage Site. And this is, um, there's quite a bit of granite scenery there in Matobo. Uh, it's also home to the largest population of black eagles to be found anywhere in the world. We'll also visit the grave of, of Cecil Rhodes, the British imperialist and politician. And uh, we'll have a lecture there on the history and the significance of Cecil Rhodes. Uh, on day 13, um, we head into Swange National Park, which is Zimbabwe's largest and most important game reserve. We'll have a morning game drive. Again, this is likely to see herds of elephants. That's most common in this national park, very, very large herds of elephants. And also this park is a favorite among our birders and uh, we have the opportunity to see and spot Kalahari birds, many, many types. Uh, we disembark the train today after we arrive to Victoria Falls and we stay at a lovely property called the Victoria Falls Safari Lodge for the next two evenings. So we say farewell to our train uh, crew who they always are just exceptionally good and guests are always sad to leave them. Uh, on day 14, we're in Victoria Falls, which is one of, you know, the seven natural wonders of the world. Uh, we'll take a cruise down the Zimbezi River. Again, opportunities for elephants spotting, hippos, crocodiles, uh, as well as just some lovely scenery there. Uh, and then that evening on day 14, we have a traditional South African barbecue to celebrate and say farewell to each other and to Africa before we depart on day 15 um, for our transfers to the airport home. And on day 16, it takes us a while to get back home. We arrive back in the US. Thank you, Vanessa. Are there any questions about the uh, African expedition by luxury train? All right. Wonderful. So again, thank you so much, Andrew. Um, and thank you again, Vanessa. So again, I am Fiorella. I'm your main point of contact to register for this phenomenal uh, expedition by private train. Again, just to reiterate, you can call or text the number on the screen as well as email at travel at wacvilla.org. And you can get in touch about any questions, concerns, or intricacies that you wanna know a little bit more about. And again, as with the other trip, you're more than welcome to also go to the trip the tour specific webpage, excuse me, where again, you'll be able to find additional information, the brochure, as well as the reservation request form that Orbridge has put together for us on their fabulous website. Again, as with the other one as well, if you would like a physical brochure for this trip, we are more than happy to send it to you. Just let us know and we will be more than happy to do that. Next, I think we will be showing a video about the importance of travel insurance. In case something goes wrong. We offer coverage in case you have to cancel your trip before you depart. Plus coverage during your trip.
All right. Well, All right. thank you um, for joining us today. Um, and we hope to hear from you soon about these trips. So please, like you said, like Farrell said, please uh, reach out to us. Let us know. You can visit our website. And yeah, we're, we're here for you. So thank you for joining and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much.